beautiful out, cold, you know, but nice. Not that I can really appreciate it much when I'm in the grips of a deep depression. One more day to business. It's hours before he gets to eat. He's a, he doesn't know that. He, he He's on a weird schedule because when I sleep in the daytime, he does, you know. But his eating schedule is the same. His eating schedule is the same. It's just if I step all night and uh, feed him before I go to bed, you know. His eating schedule is like at 5 or 6 in the morning, and then 5 or 6 at night. Right, Omar's? Mm. Go back to bed. That's all my mom wants to do is sleep. Go to the office. He did his business outside, so we're good. Um. So Auntie said to me, the the day I really talked to her, where do I feel like you? I turned the phone, uh, at least we got, we got your mom in, in to get, we got her help fast, yeah. What good did it do? She winds up committed. Anyway, she can't refuse to take her meds, people. When it comes to wanting to get out of there, not, the, a patient not taken who needs meds, not taking his meds, is a figurative, I'm saying figurative people, death sentence, in that you, if you, when you're talking about getting out, she can't not take her meds, she can't refuse to take them. And, uh, but, you know, I, 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 you guys already know my Joe and where he stands and he's like well did she say why she refused to take them he also said maybe she's tired of taking them she doesn't have a choice and you know it she doesn't have a choice Joe he knows it I mean technically that's what he used to say to me. Well, technically, if your mom, you know, Peter Bragan says, Joe shit, you know, uh, he's so uh, toxic. It's like, it, uh, but, and technically, she'd have a choice, but she, not really, and she's too broken down. A choice, you'd have to do a complete detox, and you'd still have to go off him gradually. You can't just ever go off, you can't go off your meds cold turkey. When you've been taking them for as long as my mom has been taking them. She keeps getting committed. It's a combination of her illness and her age. Her 37 year, give or take, illness and her age. Um. And she got committed when I was 12. That was for five months. And she got sectioned periodically, you know, but never committed again until recently, 2014. And 
that was after she had had, had as you guys know, one of her worst breakdowns ever. Because it was showing signs of pre-dementia or something. And she got sick again and she was only out not very long. October and that derived from does she couldn't stand, you know, she'd chosen to fight her sister, but then she, she, the conflict was just too much for her, the stress, the conflict, and whatnot. You guys know that, all the thing with my cousin being involved, and it's too much for my mom. Or some of you guys know that. So, that was only five months before she went to commit it again. But this time she lasted a whole year. Auntie was the one who told us both, told my mom, you know, Auntie's not in control anymore, but she said, get, have Laura be a joint account holder, get her name on that, you know. And it is, and she's completely protected. That was Auntie's idea. I wouldn't have thought to do that. I thought, you know, make me a beneficiary, but make me a beneficiary doesn't allow me to pay the bills if my, this happens to my mom. I had to be a joint, I had to be a joint account holder to do that. She had a whole month to get better, people. She refused to take her meds. <sighs> no plane room, so she's just like Joe said, she's tired of taking them. She doesn't have a choice. fortunate to have no health problems physically, but mentally I'm a basket case, so... It's just I don't believe in medication and I'm never going to take it. I don't even take aspirin. I don't take NyQuil. I don't take Advil. I don't take any of that shit.
really hoping she would get out. But I can, I mean, I, I can't imagine, you know, it's going to be, they have to go to court, just like the one I attended last time, we get a judge, she gets a lawyer, et cetera, et cetera. But she's in no condition to come home. I could see that. You know what I mean? I could see she's in no condition to come home. But in 2009, they wanted to commit her, and she won. When she first came home, she was... Maybe that was... When she first came home, she was... All drugged up and whatnot, but then once the drugs were out of her system, she was... I don't know. It's interesting how the hospital thought she needed to be committed, but she wound up winning. And she got out. Oh, but they didn't have, at that hospital had more morals, more you know, and didn't drug her to high heaven before I told you what happened. You guys know, you heard me screaming about the farce of a commitment hearing that happened that last time in that hor horrible hospital she'll never have to be in again. You guys know about that, me screaming about... Because it's one thing if a patient has to be committed when you're patient, but to outright lie at their commitment hearing, it just made me want to puke. And I just sat there with tears streaming down my face. My mom was so out of it, she couldn't even, she didn't even recognize I was there. And she's not normally, they had her drugged eye heavens. I made myself sleep. I don't want to do sleep.